it's kind of scary when you think about it because it's it's allergy season and flu season and and coronavirus is still going on how do allergies make it easier for viruses to enter your system yes so allergies um cause a lot of inflammation and so when you think about an allergy um like an environmental allergy it's things like pollens the dust the you know the animal dander um there your body is perceiving this as foreign and sort of revving up a response to it and that response entails a lot of um, inflammation and inflammatory cells um, so for example if you have allergic rhinitis you have all that inflammation in your nose those membranes can become what i would say uh, leaky and um, because normally they would be sort of intact membranes, but then with all the inflammation um, and swelling, you see those membranes sort of break apart um, or become leaky. And then that's a way that the viruses um, can easily, or bacteria can easily um, sort of uh, penetrate. Because so when you think about the mucous membranes in the nose, they're really serving as a barrier. But when they have inflammation, they become sort of leaky, and then it's easier for things to sort of penetrate like viruses. And that's why it's really important for your patients who have um, allergies, like allergic rhinitis and things, um, that it's, it's really important to identify what those allergic triggers are, whether it's dust mite, pollens, molds, a combination of those, and then specifically um, target uh, therapies like environmental uh, mitigation strategies um, to try to reduce their exposure. And of course, to specifically identify um, allergies, you, you need to do, you need to get a good clinical history, but you also need to do testing, whether that's blood testing or skin testing, and then sort of put the two together so that you can really figure out what is serving as a trigger for patients and then intervene specifically on those allergens because again the goal is to decrease that inflammation um, and make sure that that immune system is not sort of getting uh, sort of revved up because you're trying to reduce um, the exposures. So allergies can make it easier for viruses to enter your system but also asthma can give patients a higher risk of more severe cases of COVID. Why, why is that? Yeah, so um, when it comes to um, uh, asthma, some viruses are known to trigger asthma, but not all viruses um, trigger asthma. So uh, some of the early data reported in uh, April 2020 when, um, when the pandemic was uh, sort of, we were, you know, sort of collecting, um, uh, you know, preliminary data, the CDC Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report um, suggested that asthma may be a risk factor with 17% of hospitalized patients having a diagnosis of asthma. But again, this was sort of a smaller um, study, uh, just a couple hundred patients. However, as we collect um, more data about COVID-19, some studies uh, and many studies now are suggesting that asthma may not be a risk factor, although the studies in the pediatric population are lacking. So when you, um, when examining the New York State uh, COVID-19 data, it's not among the top 10 uh, conditions associated with uh, death. In a study of about 1,526 patients from a large uh, U.S. healthcare system um, out of Chicago with PCR-confirmed COVID-19, um, there was an asthma prevalence of about 14%, but asthma was not associated with an uh, increased risk of hospitalization. So we're, you know, getting data, and the data may be conflicting, um, so we're trying to sort of re-examine, um, you know, well, what could be the relationship. And there was one uh, study um, from the Journal of uh, Allergy and Clinical Immunology um, that hypothesized that respiratory allergies and allergic asthma may even be protective um, uh, because, because uh, protective against COVID-19 because of lower ACE2 gene expression and ACE2, um, the gene, the ACE2 gene receptors are how the virus gets in. Um, now, again, this is a hypothesis. It was, you know, postulated that this could be, um, you know, uh, protective, but it also could be using, um, you know, uh, the treatments, for example, inhaled corticosteroids. Um, that could be protective as well, because when we look at 
um, uh, in vitro studies that help decrease uh, viral replication. So we're learning more and more, and the question is, is it that um, non-allergic asthma may be, a, you know, slightly uh, uh, increase the risk of having moderate to severe uh, COVID? Um, in one study, uh, um, again, out of Chicago, uh, both asthma and obesity, um, there was higher uh, morbidity, um, and uh, asthma was independently associated with um, prolonged intubation. So it, we're still trying to understand how asthma um, relates to COVID. Uh, in a recent study of primary care records, approximately 17 million people in the UK, severe asthma was identified as a risk factor for death from COVID. So um, in all, you know, I would say in summary that the studies are conflicting. The CDC recently revised their guidelines and established uh, two categories. One, conditions that increase risk, and two, conditions that might increase risk for moderate to severe COVID, and they place asthma in that latter, latter category, because again, we're, we're just finding out so, many, so much you know, information, and, and um, it's evolving so rapidly. However, I will say that um, asthma control continues to be the top priority during this pandemic, because Patients uh, and their their caregivers, you know, when we're talking about uh, children, may be reluctant to seek medical services because of the fear of being exposed to COVID. So it's really important to optimize their control, try to prevent flares. And I think, you know, we'll still continue to look at that data as far as asthma being a risk factor. And perhaps, you know, um, you know, it, it, it may not be. But again, we need to focus on uh, asthma control.